building a business is nothing to do make, making money or having that private jet or whatever they are all by product mm. your fulfillment is coming yeah. from the pride of the business you built mm. right <laughs> it may be nothing more than mm, i went to iit kanpur these people are from iit kanpur they stayed in the same dorm <laughs> and uh, somebody i know knows them right. maybe that's the only reason you are angel investing those networks don't happen for women i was a first time entrepreneur you know once upon a time and i remember being you know very this uh, scared of vcs but uh, today you know when someone you know green you know who's doing for first time this first six months into that comes and in the pitches to, to you the wrong thing in the pitches you know they talk to me about the next 5 or 7 year plan mm. which uh, you know they can't know really india alpha you know the economy growing nearly 10x over the next 25 years like anyone who picks a problem and just stays with it for a long period of time yeah. is bound to do well Vani welcome yeah I'm really looking forward to this conversation i think i've had the privilege of working with you for last 16 years but the dynamic was always you as a board member asking me questions so finally i get the opportunity to send the record straight and ask you questions so you always had the answers but i don't know if i have the answers okay we will find out today i'm pretty sure you do i think uh, in fact you know in preparation phase i mean i know your background but i still you know going through the work you've done mm-hmm. and over four decades i think you know three very mm-hmm. different you know hats you know as a professional uh, then doing your own startups in silicon valley and i remember in my barrier days reading about your exploit in some ways you know you were among some of the early indian entrepreneurs who started company in late 90s early 2000 and you know so as big inspiration it was great to eventually get an opportunity to work with you and the last almost two decades you know coming yeah. back to india and uh, you know doing kalari so i want to start there you know after 20 plus years in us it couldn't have been easy to move back to india like what was a was that always a plan that and come back some day it was more of a something you know opportunity at that time like what made you come to india when the ecosystem was very very early in fact you were among the very few people who can help build that ecosystem in india so you know my destiny life has never been by plan mm-hmm. right and sometimes we and this is for young people and there are a lot of them that we work with as founders but also in our office in the uh, investment roles uh and overall in general i see a lot of anxiety among young people about the future mm. right and i have the vantage i turned 60 this year mm. so i have the vantage of looking back and i think the best things that have happened to me have happened unplanned mm. and in some ways letting life unfold mm. i think there's a beauty to it mm. um and because you don't know everything you don't have all the data to plan it's no mm. different than your company or anything else and life is even more complicated mm-hmm. if we can't plan quarterly numbers exactly <laughs> <laughs> how to plan life exactly yeah. right so i had no plan of coming back mm-hmm. i've always loved my indianness uh and my childhood mm-hmm. like i think most middle class childhoods in india was rich in love mm-hmm. relationships uh joy mm-hmm. and all those things and we never really thought we lacked anything mm-hmm. yeah. and so the context of your mind mm-hmm. matters a lot right and i always felt rich mm-hmm. not financially my family was not but i never felt a lack mm-hmm. right so that matters mm-hmm. um so i think coming back to india was happenstance mm-hmm. uh was uh, just a spontaneous decision mm-hmm. it could not have been planned because it was a intersection of so many things unplanned for the first time in my entire working career i was free mm-hmm. uh with my time i had sold my com- my mm-hmm. company i had exited my company rather and then uh i had the financial stability mm-hmm. and uh, uh didn't know what i wanted to do next mm-hmm. right i was in my uh i was i had just turned 40 mm-hmm. and uh it was a time for a lot of reflection i also don't like to be in a comfort zone mm. i think you stagnate yeah. and you get complacent mm. and then you start getting unhappy with yourself yeah. and when you are unhappy with yourself of course you make everybody else also unhappy because mm. you look at the world yeah uh, with a 
little bit of uh, tainted glasses and yeah. jaded, you know. So I'm okay to fail. Mm. Um, uh, what is failure after all, right? Uh, and so, and you need to do that to be outside your comfort zone, mm. not worry about right. optics. Right. So right? even if you say you're, comfor- you're comfortable being outside your comfort zone, but in 2005, six, you know, today, you know, India's stock is, you know, all time yeah. high. Everybody yeah. wants to be in yeah. India. Did you see anything, you know, beyond, you know, your love for India? I saw a the- lot of things, uh, Mukesh. It's the small things that cascade in your head. Mm-hmm. So I left India in 1985, right? So I spent, I came back end of 2005 and spent one month in India, mm-hmm. which I had not done in 20 years. Mm-hmm. Right? Of course, I visited every yeah. year, but it would be at most a week, right? right? Then that time I spent on my own, mm-hmm. which also I had not done, wandering up and down India. I went to rural India, I went to urban India, mm-hmm. just traveling. Yeah. Uh, I spent a whole day in a Gurgaon mall, mm-hmm. which was a fascinating thing because there were no malls when we yeah. grew up, right? And this was 2005, mm-hmm. even Gurgaon didn't have so many malls, yeah. right? And just talk to random people. Mm-hmm. The one good thing in India is people will talk to you. They'll tell you their whole life story, yeah. right? Uh, and... Uh, uh, just the confidence of people, their own view of their life and the consumer aspiration, mm-hmm. right, uh, uh, was interesting. And I remember I went to a Reliance Fresh store to pick up something. Reliance Fresh at that time was yeah. putting these stores. And as I was standing in the line, a mm-hmm. funny incident happened. Uh, the cashier tried to push me ahead in the line. <laughs> and uh, there was a guy standing in front of me who uh, probably was uh, a blue collar mm. uh, person. Uh, you know, and I wasn't even looking to cut the line, mm. but uh, we all grew up with the sabjiwala trying mm. to treat you as the favorite or whatever. Mm. And he just said, uh, no, I mean, mm. uh, I'm in the line, right? So, and that was great for me to mm. say, India from an equitability mm. and that confidence, yeah. Uh, is also the lines are blurring, right? right? To say, my uh, rupee is mm-hmm. the same as your rupee. Right. And that's a big societal shift. Mm-hmm. That also was important. Mm-hmm. Then I remember just taking a taxi and this taxi driver talking to me saying, next week he was going on a vacation. Mm-hmm. So I started asking him, where are you going on a vacation? Right? He said, I'm going to Bangkok. I mean, these were all revelations to me. And uh, um, and then he said to me, you know, I work very hard. I deserve a mm-hmm. holiday. And I was thinking, my father, when did he aspire to take a holiday? Mm-hmm. He would never think of going to Bangkok. Mm-hmm. If we took a holiday, it was on LTC, yeah. which uh, if you are a child of any government employee, mm-hmm. you will know what I mean. And <clears throat> it would be to some place where you have a relative or a friend whose house you can stay. Mm-hmm. Right? So right. Uh, it was almost unthinkable. You will stay in a hotel and indulge yourself, right? I saw, to me, such big societal shifts. I said, how is this going to be served? It requires uh, new brands, Mm -hmm. technology at its forefront, because that's the only way access and affordability Mm -hmm. can reach mass. Without technology, you can't Mm -hmm. uh, do that, right? So I saw a perfect recipe. So this was not just a, a passion project. Of course, passion is important uh, because otherwise you're not motivated Mm -hmm. to do anything. But uh, to me, at least, the 85 India I left, Mm -hmm. the 2005 India I saw was a confident, aspirational nation that uh, was uh, ready for uh, ready and demanding experiences, Mm -hmm. right? When I first met you, um. To me, it was not unthinkable that someday we will solve the problems of actually building a large internet business that's based on lifestyle, yeah. right? Because these were all the back points mm. to why I got excited yeah. with your vision of mm. uh, Mintra. Yeah. Of course, there were many things, COD, mm. delivery, those are all problems to solve. Mm. But did I fundamentally believe in the opportunity? Uh, the first time I met you, I believed in the opportunity. In fact, I believed even before I met you because I didn't know you, but I used Mintra <laughs> as a customer. Mm. And uh, 
the customer service that you had created even as a young mintra mm. was so good mm. i said you know indian consumers mm. want customer service but they don't get it right, right? the conventional retail mm. has never really served the customer it's like you you exist um uh, it's not that you customer is king has never been mm. the mantra yeah. right uh, when could you return things right. before the e-commerce advent mm-hmm. return you never could return anything mm. right so the consumer was never right yeah. so that people would pay for that uh, uh, relationship of mm. consumer leverage yeah. was not uh, such a distant idea right. uh, for me right so i was very excited for the new india excellent no glad you know you could see early signs and enough of conviction to move back you know lock stock and barrel you know your kids were very small at the time you know can imagine it being easy but also you know just like you move back you know some of the other people like subrata ashish gupta so we are also come say indian you know entrepreneur ecosystem benefited yes. from this folks who spent one or two decades in us being part on the either as an entrepreneur or a professional or a vc and so the whole ecosystem also benefited yes. from that thought process you know personally for me also having worked in us for 10 years for bunch of startups yeah. i kind of knew the startup dna yes. so that was you know it would have been very difficult to imagine all of that yeah. from scratch right sitting in yeah. here yeah i think um, you know for the decision to move back was easy the question was are there entrepreneurs you can fund because the notion of capital for equity yeah. though today is so common place mm-hmm. in 2006 was a Uh, alien concept you know and i had entrepreneurs ask what is the catch <laughs> right because this concept we had right. debt right <laughs> but we didn't really had yeah. risk capital right. what do i have to collateralize do you need a personal collateral yeah. no you don't right yeah. so this whole risk capital yeah. equity mindset also was not that uh, mm. entrenched but having been beneficiary of that yeah. as a entrepreneur myself mm. then uh, i think we had uh an opportunity to create this early model yeah. um for india and if a startup ecosystem has to grow mm-hmm. um you need certain ingredients of yeah. course you need the entrepreneurs because mm-hmm. they are the uh, sauce right mm-hmm. they are the glue that holds it together but you need risk capital yeah. and you need people who uh, are patient mm-hmm. and are not i mean of course you need returns mm-hmm. but for the sake of returns don't do uh wrong things mm. in the development of the company yeah. out of anxiety mm. not wrong things from a right. compliance but yeah. wrong things from operational uh, and strategic involvement mm. right you have to give a little bit of free rein to the uh, founder yeah. uh, not on governance but on operations and strategy mm. right and you have to be a little patient yeah. and all of that grounding whether it was shubrato ashish me sudhir mm. and a handful of people yeah. had already gone through personal experience of that mm-hmm. right so and so before you know you started kalari in uh, bay area you built two mm-hmm. startup both had a phenomenal outcome uh, but in those companies you know you were backing yourself in some ways like you know and then shifting gear i mean changing country very different ecosystem and also changing the modus operandi where you are not going to execute anymore you are betting on other people to execute yeah. how was that transition for you like you know both in terms i'm sure there are a lot of benefits of having built company on your own with your relatability but also not being able to drive things on your own and letting somebody you know especially you know earlier stage entrepreneurs they're all you know in some ways they're naive also they don't know like what will work what will not work so how was that whole transition for you in first few years um you know mukesh we are all <clears throat> type a's <laughs> so people have a misnomer that type a means you micromanage mm. type a means that you can't let go of control yeah. and uh, you have to do it all right i think to me type a just means that you demand a lot out of yourself yeah. Yeah. that's really what a type a is mm-hmm. more than its relationship with others mm-hmm. right to me after <clears throat> 10 years and the way i always thought about it is 40 quarters of being mm-hmm. a ceo yeah mm-hmm. delivering quarterly results mm-hmm. um i was done with it mm. it didn't hold uh that uh interest mm. for me i could perhaps do it a third time yeah. better or worse mm. uh we don't know <laughs> path not taken and yeah. what the destiny would have been but it really just didn't interest mm. me that much um i'll tell you two quick stories one i told how life 
uh, goes not by your plan. Mm. But if anybody had asked me in my early 20s, uh, uh, I think I saw myself as an intellectual, maybe a professor, mm. maybe, you know, uh, teaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, all those had some charm to me. But I didn't go down that route. So to sort of not be the one mm-hmm. in the center was for me by nature all right, mm-hmm. right? The Taipei was really about expectations of myself, mm-hmm. not that I have to own yeah. everything. So not being operationally involved was okay mm-hmm. because I was entrepreneurial in a different way. Mm-hmm. I was building my own yeah, firm, right. right? So that has its own mm-hmm. set of challenges. People think a VC job is very glamorous. It isn't. <laughs> glamorous also, in addition. To <laughs> I know. I don't think at all. I don't <laughs> think anything about my job is glamorous. But uh, uh, but it was entrepreneurial in its own way, and it was fulfilling for me. But I didn't need to control the founder or be involved in their work, yeah. right? And if you are a leader who has built companies, mm-hmm. you already learn that your role is to hire great leaders, mm-hmm. right, and empower them. If you're the best engineer in your Mm -hmm. company or you're the best marketeer and you're the best of everything Mm -hmm. or you think like that, then you are probably not Mm -hmm. building the right leadership firm, right? right? So the control part was very easy Mm -hmm. and natural. But the uh, uh, aspect of uh, empowering others, I had uh, attended a talk by Clint Eastwood and somebody Mm -hmm. asked him this question and he said, you know, Of course, I've been a successful actor, but I realized that I have so much more joy in being a director Mm. who is creating the stories that puts the actors and other actors in the spotlight. Mm. So I have a reflected halo, right? Mm. So when you succeeded at Mintra, there is a deep pride for me also, right? right? And what you've built with cult brand, Mm. right? Of course, you've done all of the work and the heavy lifting, Mm -hmm. but having participated in seeing that from the front row, Mm -hmm. right, Uh, so to speak, there is also a joy and a learning and hopefully some small impact or difference we made in that journey. Mm -hmm. So I think this notion that if you are an operating person, Mm -hmm. you can't let go. You have to know yourself Mm -hmm. well. But I don't think it's that hard. At least for me, it was a very natural mm-hmm. um, sequence of doing something else new and different. Got it. And your own <coughs> companies as well, they probably <coughs> were hiring senior leaders and empowering and delegating and so on some way. So that uh, template continues. I think just, you know, since you mentioned briefly, you know, Minta and Cult, I think I've been very fortunate, Vani, you know, to have worked with you, Subrata, Sudhir, all of us worked together for the last 16 years. Yeah. Which is probably very unique. I yeah, think absolutely. That, that many partnership i hope it continues i think it's been incredibly helpful you know, i've gone through my own journey but i think through the revolution i think i was able to count on a lot of support guidance you know different inputs from different you know investment board members so i think it was a great you know symbiotic not was is a great symbiotic relationship and i think you know, i think a lot of founders um and it's a whole different conversation than the one we are having right now but uh, don't think deeply about what do you need in that relationship and a lot of times and we have never had an adversarial relationship we may have difference of opinions when I say we I mean us as a whole board and an investor group and the management team Mm -hmm. including you right have never had a adversarial relationship over many years right and I, I think founders don't think enough about how that alters uh your life the deep trust uh to work for work together for a common outcome and for a common good, that can be very empowering. And I get very sad when I see ideas that really had a lot of merit Mm. and founders who are very talented. And somewhere this relationship uh, aspect uh, goes sideways uh, and uh, uh, reason and maturity goes out the window and emotion takes Mm. over. But I think one of the reasons we have been together able to build Mintra to the powerhouse that it is and cult to the powerhouse that it is is because there was a deep uh, uh, trust yeah. uh, and involvement uh, collectively. Right. And you know, it, it, it works wonderful, especially when things don't go well. I mean, as recently as the, you know, pandemic. COVID, you know, yeah. 20, tw- I mean, you know, starting to forget the years. 20, 20, 21, 22. So yeah. difficult. Yeah. But I mean, 
but we never had internal problems i think yes. board was fully behind the company there was a huge empowerment and also full transparency yes. from our point of view as a company there's really nothing to hide or not share with yeah. the board and that you know that but i think you were unique there uh, mukesh from the very beginning you brought a very deep transparency but also responsibility mm-hmm. nobody asked you but you said look i'm not taking a salary because of this and this situation in the company uh, the board never asked and would have never asked mm-hmm. because that's not a fair ask yeah. but setting that example as a leader and then even in the very that and some can say that's very easy for you to do today maybe because you have a different financial stability mm-hmm. but i think even early in mintra's journey when uh, you know there was an aggressive operating plan and we want quite to the plan i think you uh, proactively not only keeping the uh, board informed mm-hmm. but saying look i take responsibility as a leader for not meeting the mm-hmm. plan I, I, that may have been natural yeah. uh, for you from your personality but i think it is unique mm-hmm. and um, some of those seemingly small things mm-hmm. make a very very big difference to building that trusted relationship but more importantly setting that overall culture and example for the company no thanks wali i'm glad you remember all those i think you go through lots of ups and downs and i think ultimately when navigating those mm-hmm. um, challenging near death experience i think which company doesn't go through right including mm-hmm. which vc firm doesn't go through yeah. right you know sometimes but how does one navigate i guess that's when in some ways end up as a building your own character but also mm-hmm. the firm's character mm-hmm. and a lot of people around you see that and I mean, I've been a huge proponent of you know just obsessing about the culture Ooh. one is building the organization, mm. which creates you know so Mintra been I've been out of it for now eight plus years. Yeah. But a lot of people still tell me like there's something about Mintra is still the same. Yeah. And that can only happen during you know foundational years. Yes. So I'm glad you know we were able to do what we did together. I'm going to ask you a lot about you know VC and startup, but I want to first change to uh, and go to a topic of common interest, you know, Ooh. which is health and fitness. Ooh. Uh, I think ever since I have known you, you've always been very active. I think there was a time you were trekking and you know, all these crazy places. I think uh, my note says you know climb Mount Kilimanjaro at some point, which is six thousand meters. You know, which is pretty serious height. I think I've never been more than twelve thousand feet, which is about four thousand meters. Yeah. And you know, you've been an avid cult user. I think you've uh, stress tested most of the cult offerings. You know, yes, uh, especially in Whitefield and uh, you know, of late, I think you've been going very deep into. yoga meditation so many yeah. whole you know journey for your start and how did it evolve over a period of time and- i think we both have certain things in um, uh, common one is uh, of course the whole self care aspect mm-hmm. and not feeling guilty about that and i think that's sort of sometimes a mindset of our upbringing that if you take time for yourself mm-hmm. somehow uh, that's selfish and i uh, debunk that for you suddenly you are now in control yeah. of whatever may happen outside but you know how you the act is going to so the trigger changes. to just send that mad email <laughs> that you should have never sent to begin with yeah. all of those uh, you know are untrained impulses yeah. and uh, we see untrained impulses in children and we trying to train them mm-hmm. and it's cute as a child but as an adult child if somebody does that we yeah. kind of judge it right but we behave that way many mm-hmm. times yeah. that we don't self recognize yeah. right you behave out of impulse so that was the trigger for me to say i need this deeper journey mm-hmm. of self awareness to live life intentionally yeah. on my terms right, right? So your meditation journey started before your fitness journey my meditation journey started by, before my fitness journey and then like i said i realized how unfit i was and i also said this is a long life is a long mm-hmm. marathon mm-hmm. and so uh you know i have to get fit mm-hmm. um for to have the energy for my children for me to work at the pace that i work uh and all of that so i always feel you i i'm a very goal and structure oriented person mm-hmm. that's just my either trained personality or born personality i no longer know the difference between the two but it is yeah. what it is i'm very structured mm-hmm. in my thinking of taking a problem breaking it down and so forth so i saw a marathon coming up mm-hmm. and i said i'm going to run a marathon yeah. and until then i had not run 1 km also oh. right how how many months before the marathon was due i think it was about 8 months okay. and 8 months 8 to 9 months is actually sufficient time mm-hmm. even if you have never run to systematically yeah. plan and my thought process was 
if you set a goal out there mm-hmm. then you develop the uh, discipline and the process yeah. and the thing is these things uh, percolate deeply into all aspect of your life mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. the discipline to focus the discipline to set big goals yeah. and work on them systematically yeah. uh, there may be a day or two that mm-hmm. you are frustrated but you don't give up don't yeah. quit mm-hmm. right that don't quit attitude i think has helped me more than anything else in life mm-hmm. not just in running a marathon but in uh, everything so you trained for the marathon and finish it so actually we trained but we did not do the san jose full marathon did a half marathon okay. first yeah then few months later d- did the mother of all marathons which is the greek marathon mm. and greek marathon starts from the city of marathon uh-huh. uh, from oh. the tombs of marathon right. and ends in the athens stadium mm-hmm. which is the right. origination of mm-hmm. the concept right. of marathon so if you go back to yeah. uh, history on uh, what happened there which is always fascinated me um uh, the guarding of the gateway of europe uh, was that in mm-hmm. movement yeah. right um so we ran that marathon the lesson there though is you see a 2d map and you say oh yeah sir 70 degree mm-hmm. incline that's okay but when you are actually mm-hmm. running the 70 degree incline so it was quite hilly so from, from what idea, we trained so idea to full marathon with less than a year less than a year i mean the marathon for those who don't know is about almost 42 kilometers yeah i have never done more than half marathon you know that's also with a lot of effort so it's quite commendable but i think this also one it reminds you know there's this um, quote i really like which says how you do one thing is how you do everything yeah in some ways you know you applied it you were running your startup you had the structured thought process yeah. and able to strategize tactic and yeah. not quitting and showing up every day you know which trans into yeah. good performance at you know being able to run a marathon within one year and yeah. all the many other thing including the sir just briefly talk about this you know kilimanjaro yeah. climb you know that sounds very exotic as well as very strenuous so i think in some social studies class maybe in class 7 or class 8 i don't remember Uh, when we were you know reading geog- geography yeah. this wonder of something that's very close to equator mm. and in africa yeah. and having a glacier cap mm. somehow fascinated me yeah. and of course i had not even stepped outside of hyderabad till i went to us mm. right i never traveled on a plane or whatever till i was 21 yeah. so the notion of going to africa to climb something was very far fetched yeah. but there are some notion oh this would be cool to go to this mountain which has so many zones because mm-hmm. you start out with a you know uh, almost, it it goes through every zone right mm-hmm. uh, and you end up at the glacier yeah. but you go through a rainforest zone you go through a sub sahara mm-hmm. zone so there is all you know desert and then you go through uh, tropical zone so yeah. this is a unique mountain mm-hmm. um, from geography and like i said it's so close to the equator right mm-hmm. so it always fascinated me and uh, packing for this is hard training for it is hard mm-hmm. just because you have to pack yeah. for different zones the clothes you wear and all of that a hot one day mm-hmm. in 3 days you get yeah. into really cold right. uh, and so all of that right so again it was the same thing we did a one year of training mm-hmm. uh, figure out your gear because yeah. marathon is one thing but this requires different gear planning mm-hmm. all of that and you know and uh, it was the same drill uh, set a goal uh, plan condition yourself and attempt it with meditation okay let's let's, let's come back to you know the early stage so at kalari most of your focus have been you know mostly i think early stage investment you obviously stay with the company for a lot of your time and look you know a lot of first time entrepreneurs in common pitch to you and as a you know i was a first time entrepreneur you know as a one time and i remember being you know very just uh, scared of vc you know it was yeah. quite a task you know walking into a vc office i think some of it used to be more formal also at the time compared to there now but uh, today you know when someone you know green you know who's doing for first time this first six months into that comes and you know pitches to, to you what do you look for you know what are the few thing in first meeting that possibly stand out for you which you know, encourages you to invest more time in that person or that in idea so i also in my life have pitched to a lot of vcs right and uh, have many experiences um some wonderful many not some humorous yeah. um and you know because you meet many kind of people in life but one thing uh, i realized early on in my life is i have to be myself mm-hmm. and the biggest journey of life is first knowing who you are and then having the courage to just be authentic you mm-hmm. for example 
not because of any any reason it's just a choice i'm a teetotaler mm-hmm. i don't smoke i'm a vegetarian right mm-hmm. and then automatically the world today especially the young people think you have no fun in life and that's <laughs> you lead a very boring life I mean, so i don't know I, i'm happy with my life that's yeah. really all it is at the end of the day right but living your authentic life and not being apologetic to it i think yeah. those these are all again things that permeate through your life mm-hmm. right so to me one of the things intentionally when i was building kalari was how and what can we do mm-hmm. to make founders feel a bit more relaxed yeah. i have no interest in putting founders into extra pressure in pitching to us mm-hmm. right so how we designed our front office or how we designed our environment mm-hmm. or how people are greeted yeah. uh, uh you know how they are escorted those are things again i think intentionally at kalari we put a lot of focus into mm-hmm. and uh, i don't know what your experience as a founder was but i have a lot of founders who say you know we felt very comfortable in the office and i still remember those i think tiki is on the yeah. reception area that was a yeah. wait time you know that was the thing to snack on yeah so you know just a lot of little things like this yeah. because i've sat in many vc mm-hmm. offices how do you start founder on the time or mm-hmm. if you are running late how do you apologize to them mm-hmm. that their time too matters mm-hmm. even if they have come to you for funding and mm-hmm. just ingraining these courtesies into the firm that we don't exist if entrepreneurs don't exist right, right? our job mm-hmm. an entrepreneur is my customer yeah. so but i have to treat them like a customer right, right? Uh, so and um, but when first time entrepreneurs or any entrepreneurs come uh the first thing for me because i'm a product centric person which is why i like to do seed series a yeah. right and i we have kept our fund size to a certain size so we can continue to mm-hmm. focus on this i'm not that interested in getting involved in companies once they reach a certain mm-hmm. size because the need mm-hmm. they have from mm-hmm. us is slightly different yeah. right is understanding the product vision mm-hmm. so i tend to do well with founders mm-hmm. who have relentless focus on what is the product yeah. what is the product purpose mm-hmm. what is the product experience and the clarity of that yeah. and how much clarity and insights they have mm-hmm. matters did i learn anything from their insight yeah. matters the wrong thing in the pitch is you know they talk to me about the next 5 or 7 year plan mm-hmm. which uh, you know they can't know really <laughs> and they probably hired some Uh, i don't know banker or a kid who just finished their mba to put it together they have no context of that plan so why bother i always mm-hmm. if it gets out of hand stop them and say can you talk to me about your product right, right? i want to understand the product mm-hmm. you yeah. know from your vision right the more there is a insight and clarity mm-hmm. uh the market matters but not all founders know how to estimate a market and i'm not looking for that skill that will mm-hmm. happen over time yeah. right what is there and i'm not looking for their excel skills either right mm-hmm. we can hire a cfo to do that uh, because you are not going to learn anything uh, about your own business that way but i think the key is do you have a unique value proposition that you bring to solve this problem yeah. right and that if i find in a founder i get very excited got it no and irrespective of the whether the founder is just fresh out of college or 10 years of experience the primary thing you're looking for is unique insight about the problem and also the product approach you know whether yes. some is has a clarity and the kind of commitment to build a product that consumers will love and what is interesting is whether they're fresh out of college or you think somebody has 20 years of experience or whatever and they would be better at doing this i don't think so i think there are certain kind of <clears throat> thinkers yeah. uh, that uh, uh, get into problems uh, very deeply mm-hmm. and are very passionate about a problem and the approach to solve yeah. it right yeah. and that's what at least i uh, mm-hmm. connect to right. uh, very well and in fact even in the board meetings it's very hard for me to focus on aop this that and all mm-hmm. that until i understand what are your assumptions that yeah. are driving right Wha- you know how are you envisioning the bigger purpose and picture mm-hmm. of your uh, business mm-hmm. because aop and all that is a derivative out of yeah, it yeah. if that is not clear yeah. then everything is just numbers you don't know how you are going to even achieve those numbers or why yeah. you know if you achieve those numbers why that's going to build a valuable business right absolutely i think that makes so much sense to me i just want to repeat that you know it's a 
just you know obsession about building something that somebody is going to love yeah. if you achieve that chances are a lot more people will also like it and aop and mm-hmm. business plan mm-hmm. will build itself i'm thinking it applies to both uh, early stage but in a existing company and you know i'm thinking of you know what we are doing at curefit even building a new thing again you starting with a number yeah. of top down market size 10 billion dollars yeah. what it is that's not going to do anything yeah. unless someone you know that new product so i think is a worth repeating again you know yeah. and the early stage of any new initiative it has to be about product and the earning that customer love because what you're building is so unique and i think there are great examples for founders who have not been product founders and they have succeeded but that's a much smaller number mm-hmm. most companies succeed if there is a product founder yeah, right. who has a strong vision of the product mm-hmm. and a strong connect and relationship to the customer experience yeah. um uh, and if those two are very hard to hire mm-hmm. all the other functions branding yeah. uh, finance all of those can be hired mm-hmm. so there are only f- very very few founders that i know mm-hmm. who don't have the product yeah. and yet have succeeded and somewhere they may have still been closet founders or right. uh, closet yeah. product mm-hmm. people yeah. right so i look for product centric founders call it clear you were talking about health right, right. i see that you have an aura uh, i do yes, too yeah. and then we have the watch so in some ways what's your relationship with uh, gadgets and health yeah i think for two for one here yeah. one is i feel you know putting you use the word you know self care i do the i can function without investment my health for me sleep mm-hmm. fitness and do some extra meditation is just integral for me like everything else probably put my kids ahead of you know mm-hmm. that but in you know, all the work stuff you know come later and i see my efficiency mood everything keeps falling if i am stuff away from that so one is that i think just you know very deep conviction mm-hmm. i just it's like a fuel you know which allows me to function mm. gadgets you know cure fit you know we've been learning a lot about health fitness mm. and i have a you know bit of science background little you know that geeky side to me mm. so just learning about all these numbers and today i think we live in such interesting times where the entire human body is getting digitized yes we know so much more i mean until recently people knew way more about their car and their house than about their own body yes but these gadgets are enabling that right so mm. i can enjoy learning of the cgm thing also uh, on yeah yes. so i think I don't look at this data any more that much, but yeah, I think it's great. I think I'm very excited about inwards to come in coming future as an ecosystem. I think in 2024 we are dealing with all the excess money that got raised in 2021, right? You know, the valuation were you know stratospheric and pretty much so much easy money was available. Do you also think over somewhere this larger Indian ecosystem has a little bit paid the price for too much capital coming in too early or compared to size of opportunity? Um, you know. Mukesh, I look at life from very simple views. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, I don't know who has paid the price or not paid the price, but ultimately uh, there is a causal nature, and uh, excesses get corrected, mm-hmm. and and that's inevitable. Yeah, and in that process. there will always be winners and losers mm-hmm. right certain principles even if there was an excess if you have that keen focus mm-hmm. of long term yeah. thinking of your business you're less likely to pay mm-hmm. that yeah. price i want to ask under you know this the entrepreneurial ecosystem you know question so indian you know we see entrepreneurial ecosystem roughly about you know 20 year old around the time when you move back and you spend you know 20 years in silicon valley what are what are the big differences in the silicon valley ecosystem versus the indian startup ecosystem because you are the vantage point of you know deeply enmeshed in both and you i think you continue to be engaged with the silicon valley ecosystem as well do you see any major difference between the two there are three or four major differences one of course is depth of market size mm. which sometimes gets forgotten yeah. okay mm. so the kind of money and valuation that goes into uh, silicon valley or us <clears throat> also has a implied size of a market yeah. and the rapidness with which that market can be accessed mm-hmm. india uh, you know business story is operationally far more uh, intense yeah. right it's like our traffic mm-hmm. uh, if you have to travel uh, 40 kilometers in uh, uh, us it's not a big commute mm-hmm. uh, in india every day if you have to commute 40 kilometers in bangalore yeah. you're going to end up with lots of issues uh stress uh, apart from uh, physical issues with 
that level of travel right so it's like that mm. speed yeah. the speed of business mm. in us is a different speed than ours it's not a good or a bad thing mm. you just have to tune to this yeah. what happens many times is we think we can go at that speed mm. you cannot right. your car cannot drive at that speed because yeah. the road doesn't allow mm. same with your business yeah. right you can only drive a ship to the power of the engine mm. right so that's a big thing yeah. where somehow it's law of physics and it gets and hence law of business and it gets forgotten mm. again and again yeah it will take lot longer to build businesses in india for many reasons mm. which uh, is a different uh, topic and you have to gear for that right. and build at that pace yeah right? i think there probably one more difference is you know there are no likes of google facebook microsoft who can acquire companies in us majority of exit happen through acquisition to these companies which are you know very happy and willing to pay cash but there are two aspects to it they are willing to pay cash for deep ip companies mm-hmm. first of all we don't have deep ip companies secondly they themselves have a certain market cap mm-hmm. which india doesn't have yeah. right so you know what they are willing to pay is all very relative yeah, yeah, right so we don't have a 3 trillion company that's our entire <laughs> gdp not that company uh, valuation and gdp is related yeah. but it's a metaphor right, right? so you know uh got nvidia where do we have mm. a trillion dollar hardware company yeah. right we don't have any companies worth a trillion dollars right, right, right? Yeah. so i think this notion of google is not there to acquire mm. so i think capital efficiency mm-hmm. and the speed of building a business yeah. is a concept that every founder has to educate themselves yeah. which is very different mm-hmm. from value to here yeah. it doesn't mean we can't build valuable mm-hmm. businesses here yeah. and still make money and all of that right so that's one big difference mm-hmm. the second is you know uh, the eastern culture is a very deeply community culture mm-hmm. and western culture is a very individualistic yeah. culture mm-hmm. now startup founders by nature somewhere have to be a bit warped to be somewhat individualistic culture mm-hmm. right you have to somewhere uh, be a little bit of a mega uh, megalomania yeah. i believe in my conviction mm-hmm. others don't believe i don't care yeah. you know uh, i march to my own drum beat a little bit of that is needed mm-hmm. right or a lot of that is needed yeah. but we tend to get influenced more mm-hmm. broadly yeah. right uh, that uh, may or may not play up to take deep risks yeah i also think our aspirations mm-hmm. uh, see you unless you want to win a gold yeah. it is uh, you're not going to end up in olympics accidentally and get a gold medal right, right? it's years of training mm-hmm. so what is your focus right If you want to make junior leagues yeah. you will make that mm-hmm. you will never become an olympic athlete yeah. right it's a different training process mm-hmm. so are you aiming to build that large business yeah. right many times there is a we have a, as a culture funny relationship with money mm-hmm. building a business is nothing to do make, making money or having that private jet or whatever they are all by products mm-hmm. your fulfillment is coming yeah. from the pride of the business you built mm-hmm. right we have to more and more uh instill that and create role models mm-hmm. that you want to aspire to be like yeah. right and some of that is happening mm-hmm. but it has taken more of 20 years to get there right 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 yeah. some founders had great opportunity they sell early mm-hmm. right and why yeah. and we have to just think about these mm-hmm. uh, uh right. concepts and uh, yeah. ideas of balancing risk with outcomes mm-hmm. so these are some foundational differences mm-hmm. that i see right. uh which but in the last 5 years mm-hmm. i'm seeing a big shift yeah. in the entrepreneurial mindset mm-hmm. and you know with that shift coming in the entrepreneurial mindset you know other big shift is you know right now india is on the world's radar and i think the hype is getting to a fever pitch yeah mostly for the right reasons you know, like all the numbers are there yeah. largest you know growing economy in the world demographic dividend stable government pace of reform accelerating and yes. so on and on. so looking is just from that backdrop you know compared to like when you and i moved back to india how should today's investor and today's entrepreneur think about you know the the size of opportunity and how to play it in india see in the venture industry if you can an alpha return is like a 10x return mm-hmm. right if i have a fund that returns 10x which very few funds do yeah. uh, globally mm-hmm. right that's like a big alpha return yeah. so india at 100 uh you know whether it's a 30 trillion economy or a 
as some assume it has a potential to be a 40 trillion economy is a India alpha, yeah. right? At a country level. Right. That is a generational opportunity yeah. that happens maybe 300, 400 years. Right. If you have read Rise and Fall of mm. Nations, uh, you see that civilizations yeah. go through that big burst and then sometimes then they, yeah. uh, because you can't keep up that pace, mm -hmm. right? And then this uh, sort of stabilize um, and so forth. We saw that before for Europe and then America, mm -hmm. China, India's time under the sun, so yeah. to speak. So India has, India at 100 has an alpha, yeah. right? If a country is having alpha mm. that comes from, that has a dividend yeah. to, uh, you know, the citizens at large, it must, if it doesn't, then it will create deep social problems. Yeah. The reform, the government, uh, as it rightly should, has to be about wealth distribution yeah. deeper mm. into the um, society, 1% right. uh, of the people can't hold 80% of the wealth. Yeah. That doesn't work in a social yeah. uh, um, uh, uh, graphs, yeah. right? So, and startups are great for that because they're more democratic about mm. uh, division of wealth, yeah. right? Um, so, and that's why also I like the startups from a economic value creation for a country, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> As an economic value engine even, for the um, country. So I think there is a big Indian alpha and we are very fortunate, I think uh, generationally fortunate to mm. be in this moment. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know that when I was born 60 years ago mm -hmm. that I'd be sitting in this moment of yeah. India's life, right. right? So so for startups and hence the um, uh, others involved in the ecosystem, whether that's investors, whether mm. that's whatever the support infrastructure, yeah. I don't think there's a better time. And mm -hmm. for founders also, uh, whether it's India to global, mm -hmm. you and I were talking earlier about deep tech, yeah. India kind of saying we can also be a leader in technology, which we never really mm -hmm. have been. We may have been leader in applications, yeah. but not on technology. Uh, you, we, whether it's uh, ISRO over years that has shown Capital efficiency. Mm. We we're talking about yeah, capital efficiency. Right, yeah, Look at what they've done, mm. right? So creating a whole industry of space tech, and you have been deeply involved in that as an angel investor, also an early mentor. And you know, so all of that, if you and manufacturing, what is happening with mm. India with that India's EV yeah. uh, uh, IP, yeah. and so on and so forth. If you see, uh, there is an industrial development. Uh, at a grassroots level and also from the incumbents, mm -hmm. significant capital going at the yeah. infrastructure level, ports, mm -hmm. uh, which you need uh, in order to develop economy and so on and so forth, right? So I think it's a very, very exciting time. Yeah. There's a good mental model to keep in mind, I think what you're calling India Alpha, you know, the economy growing nearly 10x over the next 25 years, which is which is not that long, you know, it's been nearly 20 years since even yeah. you know, I moved back to India, so another 20 years will happen. And if we are able to see this yeah. alpha happen, I think anyone who picks a problem and just stays with it for a long period of time yeah. is bound to do well. Yeah. The only thing is people who are just maybe keep jumping one thing on there and you know, be very myopic and looking for stellar returns two, three year period is probably the only way. Or a quick win. Out. You may yeah. be lucky to get a quick win, yeah. but just focus on winning. Right. Quick or not is a yeah. uh, matter of destiny. Yeah. And you know, letting the compounding happen. I mean, yeah. If the country is you know, going to compound to 10x, just that's just average. Yes. If you do like dramatically, you could do 100x. 100x, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you should aim for that. That's right. Yeah. You know, if you aim for that, uh, and I think I believe several entrepreneurs will be able to achieve yeah. that, right? And I feel extremely privileged every time I sit with a founder because I learn something. Yeah. And one of the most important thing I've learned is to go into every meeting with an open mind. Yeah. Not to think that I know everything. I mm. don't because the founder has invested tremendous time yeah. thinking about that problem. Yeah. I have not, right? Yeah. So I think founders will compound yeah. uh, 100x whatever. And if we are privileged to be with them, yeah. that's a fun ride. Right. And part of, you know, our founders compounding 100x, I think I have to ask you this. Why? I mean, the whole VC and entrepreneur ecosystem still continues heavily skewed, you know, just male dominated and very few I and mean, I hardly know you know women investors you know that uh, I mean you are obviously a very prominent one but not that many and same for entrepreneurs 
and you talk about it, it probably worries you. Who needs to do what for this to change? It's not changing fast enough. So, uh, my own story, I remember talking to uh, this investor who gave me my angel investment first. Mm -hmm. And if I look back, I was so ignorant, okay? And years later, I talked to him and said, why did you invest in me, right? At that point, I was just happy to take the money. <laughs> Somebody believing right. in you. And you need that at that mm. point, right? You don't have all the answers. Mm. Anybody can invest when you have all the answers. Yeah. But somebody has to connect the dots in certain way that maybe others are not connecting, mm. right? Um, so he said, you know, when you were pitching, because my area was very different, mm. I didn't understand what you were pitching, right? But you were very confident mm. about the problem and your solution, mm. though I didn't understand it. And then I felt in judging people that you will not quit. You will mm. do your very best. Yeah. Okay. Now you can't ask anybody to do more than their mm. best. Yeah. Right. That's all they can do. And then he said, um, my daughter, I was thinking about her. And I said, you know, she has no role models. Mm. Right. And I have a responsibility to create, if I can, yeah. to create role models for her. So I thought I invest so much, then why not, mm -hmm. right? Of course, he was an angel investor, not a fund. Mm -hmm. And, you know, while that's not very comforting, because mm -hmm. he didn't say invested because I was brilliant <laughs> and wowed him or whatever, <laughs> but fine, right? But the thing I took away is, do you give people chances, mm -hmm. right? Do you try? Mm -hmm. And uh, if each of us did a little bit of that, mm -hmm. Mukesh, yeah. it makes a difference. You have to, for the right reasons, believe in a person. Yeah. And many times we are pattern recognizing mm. certain things. Yeah. It may be nothing more than, mm, I went to IIT Kanpur, these people mm. are from IIT Kanpur, <laughs> they stayed in the same dorm, mm. <laughs> and uh, somebody I know knows them. Right. Maybe that's the only reason you're angel investing, right. right? It's not that at an early stage, there are many reasons to mm. why you are convinced to invest, yeah. right? Mm. Now, those networks don't happen for women. Mm. But... If people like you, I, who have mm. opportunity to invest, yeah. if we kind of can break that mold, mm -hmm. I could not be here yeah. if someone didn't believe in me right. at mm. some point, right. right? For whatever reasons they believed, even if it was to say, and it was very, I thought, progressive and forward thinking. Mm -hmm. And his own daughter, by the way, is now uh, just uh, 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 a doctor who uh, is phenomenally respected, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, 30 years later, yeah. fast forward, mm. a young girl grown up, right? Right. But if we all say mm. we have to create future role models, maybe you get to create only one, yeah. right? But that one could have a ripple effect, right? right? So, you know, even the CXXO program I've started mm. is for that reason to say, mm. if we can invest in five, six women founders mm. a year, not that you're not validating their business plan or whatever, but all of our validation today mm -hmm. has inherent biases. Yeah. That is called a pattern, right. right? We are all recognizing certain patterns. Yeah. This college, this community, yeah. this sector, you know, there are many things. Okay. And those patterns work against women, yeah. largely. But part of self-awareness is also to understand the implied biases in your pattern mm -hmm. and try to break that. Yeah, yeah. And if more people did that yeah. and at least did some portion of their investing more mindfully mm -hmm. into women uh, founders, uh, you know, you will create that ripple effect. Right. So you're saying, you know, action speaks louder than words. And I think everyone has a choice, at least those who genuinely, sincerely care about it and in a position of uh, enabling a path for someone and I mean, you are obviously an incredible role model, but the more role model we see, it will also inspire other people to kind of follow in their footsteps and, you know, feel uh, that you know, they can also also do it as somebody they can relate to. Yeah. I hope, you know, a lot more of that happens. We have one last question, Vani, for you. This is for maybe targeting, you know, aspiring VCs. Mm. Now, you have been, you know, seen a VC <laughs> journey. I think VC is also, I think by any stretch of imagination, not a easy profession. Uh, what does a learning curve for a VC look like? You know, people who want to potentially be VCs. What, first of all, how should they think whether this is for me or not? And if they want to become a VC, what does, you know, five or 10 year journey for them look like to 
actually become a good investor and enabler for the founders they work with see um whatever you want to become call that vc call that i don't know athlete call that founder i think it's really important to first figure out why and why do you want to be that and what are you willing to invest into it often times when i ask people why do you want to be a vc uh you know oh i want to make a difference to a founder how are you going to make a difference to the founder oh i'll help them with their strategy but why are you qualified to help them with their strategy you know and that's the last thing you can help a founder with right yeah. imagine me trying to help you with your strategy at mintra i may have an opinion right. but it cannot supersede your opinion because you are doing this 20 hours say right. day how will i know more than you about mm. strategy now i may be able to help you in many other areas mm. but strategy is actually the last of the things vc sort to help with at mm. least from my perspective so i think a vc is you have to commit at least 10 if not 15 years of your life mm. if you want to validate yourself as a mm. vc are you any good any bad because mm. that's how long the companies are going to yeah. take are you willing to put that much time into mm-hmm. your career to do that yeah. if you're motivated to do that mm. my motivation was i really still today feel uh i was extremely lucky to have an opportunity at the ground zero of a evolving ecosystem mm-hmm. and be able to learn and participate as it grew along yeah. right and um, I don't go into mental math of if I did X, maybe I would have made more money. If I did Y, who knows? Mm. I don't know, right? But I am simply happy doing mm. my job Perfect. every day. Yeah. So if you are a VC and you are going to look at your personal mm. wealth equation or a founder, mm-hmm. you know, every year, it's not going to work. Yeah. If you focus on, you know, certain areas you want to go deep into and build expertise, mm-hmm. much like the founder has to, even a VC has yeah. to. and you develop a investment thesis mm-hmm. you develop a playbook and you are disciplined yeah. for 10 15 years you will win you mm-hmm. will have losses yeah. but you will win mm-hmm. but you got to give that 10 15 years right. and be disciplined right so it needs to be a very carefully considered choice first of all being clear about why you are getting in the first place because it may not be for everything for example i know i probably cannot be good vc because you know i just have want too much control you know in terms of driving things and just you know watching from a distance is it is difficult for me and hence you know i choose to do project where i am more of a operator or maybe i give a advice but knowing fully well that you know entrepreneur will make you know their own choice so i think understand reason the value add and then go through a 10 to 15 year apprenticeship to really learn the tricks of the trade and go through many cycles and see your own portfolios power law experiencing that is probably going to vary but i think you know if india's 10x alpha has to happen i think entrepreneurs and vcs you know also have a huge role to play because i don't think this traditional industry alone is going to create i think technology has to play bigger and bigger role and that's where i think this vc entrepreneurial ecosystem is going to play a very big role but one is wonderful uh thank you for taking yeah, the time i think fun. Uh, there's so many different things we were able to speak about i'm pretty sure people who watch this you know will will take a lot of inspiration for things yeah. you have to share yeah. as well as uh, apply some of these you know tools and concepts in their lives well, thank you it was a great conversation as you know that uh, i have a lot of personal respect for you personal affection for you and i think as a firm we have made a lot of money uh, being involved with you thank you for that right we couldn't continue to do fund after fund without founders uh, uh, deeply committed one thing you always did was to say i need my shareholders to make money and that's not uh, negotiable mm. and you always stood up uh, for yourself your team and your shareholders and uh, i wish those who are capsules we could feed <laughs> everyone in the ecosystem but i'm uh, grateful for that role model you created also early on in the ecosystem thank you and you are very kind and hope we continue to do that and i think we'll have a lot of collaborator collaboration ahead of us in future as well yeah. so, thank you okay. at sparks we aim to bring to you stories of exponential impact we share in depth analysis of what goes behind success stories if you find our conversations interesting you can join us by subscribing to our youtube channel You can also listen to Sparks on Spotify, Apple Podcast or any other audio platform of your choice. 
If you have any suggestions on who we should invite or what topics we need to cover, just let us know in the comments. We are always listening, looking for ways to improve and keep getting better as we go along.